Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back. Thank you for joining us today for another Hub One on One. My name is Imani Moore, and I'm the engagement coordinator for the Austin Community Hub. And hi, my name is Novia, and I'm the community resource coordinator for the Austin Community Hub. Thank you, Sonovia. Uh, I want to go ahead and start by introducing a little bit about who we are and what we do. The Austin Community Hub was designed to be a dedicated space where we can engage with the members of our community. So we're here to serve as a connection between Austin residents and all the services that are offered by Axe Network partner organizations uh, such as child care, job training, youth programs, legal assistance, and much more. Each of our Hub 101s gives you the opportunity to get to know our different partners and give live answers to your questions. Hub 101s take place twice a month on Zoom and Facebook Live. Yep, yep, yep. And today we are joined by WHA. And we have Joseph Green and we have Tonya Grisby uh, from WHA here to give us a presentation. After the presentation, uh, we'll have time for Q&A. So please drop, drop your questions in. If you're on Facebook Live, drop your questions in the chat. And the floor is all yours. Joseph and Tanya, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Joseph Green. I'm the Director of Workforce and Job Development here at Westside Health Authority. And then I have Miss. Tanya Grisby at Westside Health Authority, Assistant Director of Re, uh, Reentry. All right. So we're going to begin with our first. Can everybody see everything? Okay. So we're going to start out with our agenda. There's a couple of things that we're going to do. We're going to introduction um, who we are. Um, and then we'll go through the other slides as we as we continue on. So, all right. So, Westside Health Authority. We are a non for profit organization based on the west side of Chicago. Um, we were founded in 1988 by Jackie Reed. All right. And our mission, our mission is to use the capacity of community residents to improve the health and well being of the community. You know, for WHA, health is defined broadly to include the social and physical environment, which contributes to the mental, physical, and spiritual well-being of a person. So we're meeting people where they're exactly at, but the relationships that we build with the family and friends and the neighbors, this will allow us to create stable employment for the people that live in the Austin and surrounding areas on the west side. So I'm going to hand it over to Tanya to kind of go over our employment services and then go over some of the requirements that are, are going to be needed. So Tanya, the floor is yours. Thank you, Joseph. Yes. Um, good afternoon, everyone. OK, so with uh, Westside Health Authority here, what we do in employment services, we do welcome all. But with some of the programs, you will have to be a Chicago resident. Um, employment services for adults 18 years and older. We offer those for returning citizens, seniors, and our veterans. Case managers provide in-house supportive services, Illinois issue IDs for homeless people, birth certificates, housing services. We also do outside referrals from collaborative partners for assistance with food, clothing, furniture, mental and substance abuse programs, and much more. Assessing individuals' goals, short and long-term working together on an individual employment plan, acronym IEP. New job readiness training um, program that we just created will take place. We're looking forward to it on uh, November 1st. Um, it will assess um, employment work history, emails 101, Zoom 101, how to show up for work, some of your work ethics, um, knowing how what to expect, how to look for jobs, and also mock interviews. Um, job placement, staying on the job, missing days, being punctual, go days, 
to, to a year before the employer trusts you, financial literacy, savings, credit, emergency funds, Roth IRA. Those are some of the things that we're going to implement in the um, job um, training um, program as well. Encouragement towards personal development and obtaining a skill set for career-based employment, as well as furthering their education. We, we here at Westside Health Authority, we build report with all our clients, potential clients, anyone that just asks them for services, even ones that's coming in for CETA, we will refer them in-house or either outside of um, Westside Health Authority. We also have an overcomer soup kitchen there where we prepare hot cooked meals by our re-entry coordinator. It's every Thursday at 2.30 at 5816 West Division. And also we do free haircuts there with a professional barber and it's limited to six people per Thursday. Some of the requirements and processes, um, like I said before, you have to be a Chicago resident to receive services, but we do not turn anyone away. It's just certain programs that you will have to be a Chicago resident in order to get the supportive services that you're seeking. You must have a physical Illinois ID, driver's license, physical social security card. We can assist you um, also if you don't have those documents. We can um, send you to some of our partners that we work with that can further you to retrieving another um, social security card, birth certificates, things of that sort. We do ask that all individuals that seek an employment arrive at the office at 8.45 a.m., no later than 9. That's the start time for the orientation. You must be on time with those supported documents. Be prepared to stay at least three hours or more to complete the orientation process. You will be conducted with seeing a case manager and also going through the TAVE test. We just asking you to have patience, complete all the intake information and orientation paperwork, complete the TAVE test and reading, math and science. Then you will have an introduction of a case manager and they will complete a I, IAP with your individual assessment plan. There where the case manager build a report with you and um, you know, ask you what you're seeking. You may be seeking housing. They can help you with that, placing you into um, shelters, referring you um, to CHA, and also doing applications with you as well for SNAP benefits. Some of the low income apartments where you will be getting a, um, be on a place on a waiting list. Also, you um, after completion of the or orientation paperwork, you will be scheduled an appointment to meet with your career slash job coach. I'm gonna pass it over to you, Joseph, now. And you know what? Also, we will meet with you where you're at, but we will challenge you to grow. That's yes, our yeah. motto. No matter where you at, we, we're gonna challenge you and we're gonna help you get to where you wanna be. And Joseph. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So just like Tanya said, it's very important um, that those particular guidelines are in place to make sure that you are not wasting your time or we may need to connect you to someone else or connect you to one of our partners uh, for a referral. So it's very important that, um, that you understand what the criteria is. You must have a it, Illinois issue ID, you must have your social security card. Um, those two documents are what you're gonna need for any type of employment. And we will need those documents to get the, get the process started. If you don't have those documents, then we can still work with you as well. Uh, we would just prefer that you call and you'll get that information at the end of how to get in contact with us. And so let's turn the page to workforce development. And as Tanya said, we're going to meet you where exactly you're at, but we are going to expect of you. We are going to demand of you in a, a sort of speak, but it's in a good way because we love on our clients every single day. 
We pray for our clients as well, but we will work with you until the time you first walk through the door, until you're 90 days of on your job and so forth. We're always there to help or to give you any type of information, lineage, uh, events, anything that's going on in the community. And so I turn it right now to Corridor Ambassador Program because with our workforce development, this program is very key. And so the Corridor Ambassador Program has allowed WHA to hire individuals within their own community in Austin and in the Garfield Park areas. Um, this provides part-time employment and leadership roles. Ambassadors learn time management. They learn about having a strong work ethic and employment preparation for the development after the program. So this program doesn't last forever, right? And so I am looking for individuals who can become leaders right there on the spot, or we will grow them into leaders, right? Some individuals will move on and go to a different department, right? So we are not only building them up for the process, but we're also putting them in a position to grow, right? And whatever that grows, however they grow, we want to be with them every step of the way. So the ambassadors do community engagement, relationship building, empowering, sharing resources, as well as they are part of community events, building capacity with local business owners. That is the primary goal of a corridor ambassador, to make the block feel secure, to make the corridor feel welcome, but also let the business owners know that there is a responsibility between those patrons and those business owners. And so the ambassadors are that buffer, right? Because they come from this community. They come from the from this from this block. They come from this corridor. And so they're the buffer between business owners who may not look exactly as the people that they're serving in the community. And this allows for them to build capacity. It allows for building relationships. And then WHA as a whole, we like to connect our small business owners to opportunities that the city may have. So WHA ambassadors have done community fundraising, our team in particular. Um, they've done their own fundraising, building relationships with the local cleaners. And they did a clothing giveaway uh, back in, I believe, June, which was very successful. Might have been July. I, I might have my dates wrong. Um, but this program in a whole has allowed for every single part of the city of Chicago that has this ambassador program to give jobs back. But we at WHA, we want to build structure. We want them to understand that this is the stepping stone into the next life, your next phase. And I'm very proud to say that we have a number of people who started off as ambassadors who are working in our youth department. Uh, we have other ambassadors who have gone on and are working in other organizations. And so it's just a stepping stone to go into the next uh, phase of their journey. Next slide, please. And so workforce development, I want to really just tap into the Community Violence Intervention Grant. Uh, we were a part of the hub with the Institute of Nonviolence, who was awarded to be a part of implementing the SC2 Violence Prevention Grant in the Austin area. So they're currently working in Lawndale. Uh, they worked in other parts of the city as well. But we, as an initiative, as, as, as a collective, we're all working together um, to provide the outreach, to provide the community engagement with the families, but also to provide educational pieces and workforce development pieces. And we here at Westside Health Authority are proud to be one of uh, the sub hubs are a part of this. Some of our other partners are our hosts today, Austin Coming Together, Build, Chicago, uh, Hope, CDC, the Institute for Nonviolence, which is our main hub, Heartland Human Care, which is going to be also providing workforce development. Um, I'm sorry, Hope CDC also is providing uh, workforce development as well. Together Chicago is another partner that's doing the outreach. Jehovah Jeru One, forgive me if I'm pronouncing the last part wrong. Together Chicago, which I have twice, I'm sorry. What About Us is another partner. And of course, WHA, Westside Health Authority. So all of us are working Together, um, we have been, they have been in talks since, uh, I would say, February or March. I have been in talks since June of this year. Uh, so we have got our team together. And what we're going to do, be doing is that we're going to be getting individuals 
uh, from what's called our dashboard. And this dashboard is particularly to those individuals who have violent backgrounds, who may be currently active shooters in the community, but something in them has triggered where they said, I I'm tired of this and enough is enough. And so those individuals who are in the Austin area have decided that they want to change their life and they're connecting with these organizations that are on this, this, uh, this platform. And so once they are ready, once they, they're mentally ready, once they're physically ready to go to that next level, we welcome them um, for the workforce development piece. Um, and we have a whole just master plan in order to work with them for more than 90 days, to work with them at least for a year and to get them on their path to find purpose. So we're looking for leaders. We're looking for entrepreneurs. We're looking for people who are ready to step into a career base and individuals that are ready to change their life. And so just taking that first step of saying, I'm done with this, with this life and I want something better, that's the first step. And so we want to meet them along the way for that path. And we're very excited about the future, um, not only for 2024, but 2025 and beyond. Next slide. Aspire to inspire. So um, I just came from the Aspire Center earlier today, and it was my first time doing a walkthrough. Um, we had did some barbecues maybe two years ago during COVID, during the pandemic, and we were looking, going inside of the building, and it looks nothing like what we saw today. So I was just very blown away. Um, we have another hub that's going to get more in-depth to the Aspire Center, but that particular workforce and the, the, the services that we've talked about earlier, myself and Ms. Grisby, those services are going to be provided at the Aspire Center. And so our anchor tenants are Austin Coming Together, BMO Harris Bank, Jane Adams Resource Corporation, also known as JARC, and then Westside Health Authority as well. So we're going to have a floor for financial, uh, financial services, for referrals, to help people to find out what they need. And then on that second floor, we're going to have, oh, also on the first floor, we're going to have workforce development, um, looking at CNC machine operators, right? And getting individuals to look at that stepping stone into being placed in this program and then finding employment after the program. And so these steps are not going to be easy steps, but these are going to be the steps that we want individuals to take. So we don't want people to be um, nervous or intimidated by the big windows. This particular project, the first money that was raised for this project was raised by the community, by the people. And so it's very empowering that people wanted to see change. And they didn't want to just tear the whole building down. They just wanted to develop with the inside of this building. And so the building has history. A lot of individuals went to school there. Um, it was a former grammar school uh, in Mateo. And so now for it to become a model for workforce in the Austin community for the west side of Chicago, we got a lot of work, right? But I'm very excited about that work. So I'm thankful for our partners and I'm thankful for our team because our entire workforce employment reentry staff is going to be housed on that second floor. And what I saw today blew me away. So I'm very excited about the future. And we want you all that's watching to get excited about the future because yes. we are coming to empower you. We are coming to give you the resources, but we are coming to give you the keys. And we just want you to have the guts to grab the keys out of our hand and open the door. And there's steps to all of that. You got to grab the key. You got to walk up to the door. You got to have the courage to stick the key in the door, turn the knob, and then actually open the door to go and walk through. And so all of these steps, we want to encourage people to get in contact with us now. We're doing the work now. And um, we can go to the next slide. Partners and development programs. So we have a number of programs that we partner with, but we need more, right? We need more. And if you are on the call or if you know someone that we should be connecting with, I don't care what side of town they're on, if they are doing the work, uh, we want to connect with them. The more partners we have, that means there's more resources for individuals to have. The more 
resources that a person has that gives them different choices. We don't want to just put people in a job. We want them to find their career if possible. And if that's through development, through one of our partners, then we relish that. If it's development through uh, a, a development program like a, a Greater West Town or a Greater Food Depository or a Revolution Workshop or a St. Paul Ministries pre-apprenticeship program or uh, Hire 360, there are many programs that we are connected with, but we don't have all of the keys. We don't have everything. And so we're looking to connect and partner with more people as we keep going. So, um, Ty, did you want to add anything to what I said about the partners and programs? Because I know I didn't name yeah. everybody. I just want to say some things that we are here to service the people. And yes, to be inspired to go to the Aspire Center is just, it's, it's, I don't know what to say with it, but it's just, it feels good that I know that we're going to make a difference. And I'm glad that we have the partners that we have and potential partners that we're going to grow with moving forward, that we can be in the Austin community to help people from all sides of uh, other towns. Um, and also that I'm, I'm glad that we have a great team on board as far as in our case managers and the job coaches that's inspired, that's passionate about the work that they do. So they're not just here to help you find a job, help you with getting you a state ID. They are passionate and they go all out to help you in so many ways that they stay after hours to uh, get the job done. So just don't think that you're coming into the office and to be turned away. We're going to help you with whatever things, um, anything that you would need. Absolutely. And uh, uh, I'm going to reiterate, be patient. Be patient. What's for you is for you. Nothing can take that away. Just let God. But you have to have patience um, and have respect for the people that are here to serve you. So we have a small staff, but it's going to grow. It's going to grow. Right. But our staff loves the people that they serve. And I will just say shout out to the case managers, to all the job uh, coaches and specialists, uh, to the intake specialists, to the director and the assistant director. Um, you're going to get love in the door. I see SAC Ridge coordinator as well, and then myself and my team. So um, we'll leave the floor open. I know there were some questions in the chat, and then we can start to answer those. Um, should we go at the top? Probably start at the bottom, right? Yeah. 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 Um, start yeah. at the top. All right. Pre so the appreciate one... that. Okay, sorry. I'll, I'll read them off to you. I'll read them off to you. Um, okay. Let's see. Do we? Okay. The first one is self-explanatory. Right. Do you offer that. employment? Right. Yes. We do. We offer employment in-house, and we also have the job coaches, the career specialists here to assist you on finding employment. So we we answered that one pretty much. Right. Um, is WHA doing anything? I'm sorry, I'm just proactive. It's intentional related to clean energy. Uh, we're looking into that. That has been an option. Of course, we are. Uh, we 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 are connected with uh, State Rep. Lashawn K. Ford, and he is very adamant about um, our youth in particular learning more about clean energy, but also our adults and return of citizens. So we are looking. There are a number of clean energy, energy programs. I think one of the biggest things that, and I am speaking for Mr. Reed and for WHA, is that we're putting them in this program, but there is an end game of some type of career or some type of job placement after completing their program. And so um, there are a number of companies that are hiring, uh, but I don't know if there are a number of uh, companies in the city or in surrounding parts of the city that are doing hiring in that particular uh, field. But we are definitely looking at clean energy programs uh, in the uh, future, and we'll have more on that as we continue uh, to share. Yes. Um, the approximate opening of the Aspire is April of 2025, but I am saying June just to be on the safe side. But we are attentively for April of a, a grand opening sometime in uh, probably the middle or late April. Uh, what resources and grants are available? 
So employment resources are available. Um, there are other resources as well. I have a flyer um, that was shared that can also be shared and sent out. Um, the main thing is if you call our uh, our regular number, and I can um, put that in the chat, or I can repeat it a couple of times, 773-786-0226. That's 773-786-0226. Uh, we want you to call before you come. We don't want you to waste bus fare. We don't want you to waste the trip. But if you call that number, 773-786-0226, uh, you can get those questions answered. One thing is that you must be a Chicago resident, and then you will have to come in and connect with one of our case managers, or they will have to write a referral for you. It depends. But if you're coming in for employment, and specifically for employment, 845 is the time to be there with both your state ID slash driver's license or your social security card. It must be physical copies and you must be prepared to stay for at least three hours to get through that day. All right. Uh, what do, do you make referrals to other organizations for additional resources there? Yes, we, we do. But we do have to build a rapport, which we don't just want to say, hey, go over here and, and, and they're going to take care of you. Um, if it's a phone call and you've never been here before, then we will connect you in that way, fashion. But if you come in and you've connected with the case managers, then that referral is going to be a lot different. And yeah. so if you're asking questions about some needs, we want you to call. But if you already have a rapport or a relationship with one of our case managers, then you'll call that particular case manager and then tell them what your needs are. OK. Uh, what if someone doesn't know what career path they want to take? We do have employment assessments. So they ask questions about what are your likes? What are your dislikes? Uh, what are some of the things you're interested in? Some people might be interested in taking care of pets. Some people might be interested in building certain things. Um, we're going to give you the assessment and that'll allow us to find out what options are available based on what you like. We found that when a person likes what they do and what they, what they get up every single day for, it's easier to go to work. And so, for example, I could say myself or Ms. Grisby, we love helping people. I love to talk, as you can see. I love to run my mouth. Yeah. And so when I'm talking, I feel like I'm trying to build up somebody that's watching I'm trying to empower somebody that's watching. I'm trying to connect with somebody that's watching. And so in hopes that you are going to come in, that you do have those documents, that you you are interested in what we offer. And so um, you'll get my information a little in a second, and then you can feel free to give me a call and connect. Uh, yeah. What if someone never finished high school? Yes. We can connect you, uh, Greater West Town, depending on how many credits you have and depending on how long it's been since you were out of school. Greater West Town is one of our partners and they have a uh, high school program. And so if you're a couple of credits away, uh, they determine it based on how many credits you have and depending on how long you've been out of school, then you can go into their program as long as you have the documents that's needed and then go through that process of getting your diploma. Now, for those of you who do not have any credits and you're looking to get your GED, then we will connect you with one of our partners who is at Malcolm X College, mm -hmm. where they have a free GED program that you can go through. Um, it's going to take a lot of determination. It's going to take a lot of hard work. But I found that if you do a piece here, do a piece there, get the work, wait a while, do another piece, do another piece. You can get it all done and get it taken care of. But if you try to tackle it all at once and you got to work, and you got to take care of your child or you got to do all these other things, then you can kind of overextend yourself. And so there's ways and there's people that we can connect you with that will kind of talk and walk you through those steps. All right. How are you able to assist an individual who's not a youth? How in what way, you? Sandra? Um, yeah. I mean, we can assist them in all ways. We have job coaches on board and we have the case managers. And also we just have um, staff 
that will assist any and everyone in all areas on exactly, you know, what they're looking for. And we will point them into, into the right direction, either it's um, here at WHA or to our partners throughout the community base. Yeah, because um, if they're not youth, then we should be working with them. I'm assuming anyway, you mean right. adults, our seniors, our veterans. That's we, we service all of them. Now, if it's a youth, then we have a youth department that we can connect them with or one of our partners like Bill, um, or we can connect them to Austin coming together and they have some people, some connections as well. So um, if they're not youth, that's what we service. Yes, because so. in our department and here at the Workforce Reentry, we are servicing um, individuals 18 and older. But like Joseph said, we do have a youth yeah. department that serves the youth. It, the question kind of, it, it's kind of, because it's like twice. How are you going to assist yeah. an individual who's not a youth? That's who we service. So we, we are servicing individuals 18 and older, seniors, returning citizens, and veterans. If they're not 18 and older, then we are going to refer them to our youth department or we're going to refer them to one of our partners that helps with that as well. And some of the things that we didn't talk about is legal aid service. So we can help with expungement for those mm -hmm. individuals who want to get their record expunged. Uh, we also have legal aid service uh, for uh, renters insurance, our renters issues, our if they don't have their SNAP benefits. So we have an intake over at our office at 5422 West Division. Um, and that's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Or they can meet with one of the case managers or job coaches and explain what their issue is. And then they will assess it themselves and determine if legal aid can help them or not. Uh, and that, that service will be provided also at the Aspire Center in 2025. So when we move, they'll move. So to answer your question, we service everybody 18 and up. If you're younger than 18, then we're going to refer you to our youth department and they have some programs as well around coding, um, as well as pre-apprenticeship for construction and things like that. We're connected with a lot of different other programs as well. So, Yes, we have another question too, Joe. So, um... Has our agency came across individual going through family violence or do domestic violence within your support services um, program? Yes, we do get people that come in with um, domestic violence um, issues and been through that. And we are partner with um, some agencies um, in Chicago that we refer our clients to and we help put them into some shelters as well, you know, to um, get away from... Um, the violent, you know, um, domestic yeah, violent um, case that they're, you know, in. So we do, we do support those. Yes. So I'll give you a quick story real quick. Um, this was back when we were at 5816 as a whole unit. There was a young lady and her son, they were being evicted out of their apartment because the actual landlord was trying to sexually harass the young lady. Um, our case manager at the time, Ms. Smith, had a connection over at the um, Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, we took her and her son and her belongings over to the Salvation Army. They got her into a mission immediately. And then we took her there. And then we also got her a monthly bus pass so that she could start work and get herself off her feet. Um, I haven't spoken to her in about a year. But I believe uh, last time I did speak to her, she's doing very, very well. Um, so there's different stories for different uh, people. We have a lot of returning citizens that have been dealing with trauma. We have a lot of adults right now and youth that are dealing with trauma in their home. And it's one of the reasons why there's a lot of acting out and there's a lot of, of, of retaliation in our own community. And so we just have to show them a different way and show them a different way of looking at life. And hopefully if we can get into that family reunification piece and connect them with their families, then we're doing the right thing on our end by uh, making sure that we're working with everybody. Because sometimes it's not just the person that needs help. Sometimes we got to help the whole family. And, you know, we, we don't have everything, right? And that's why these partners and, and these other relationships are so important. So we look forward to connecting with other partners. We, we look forward to building this out. 
and we're looking um, to really be able to help our people, help our people every single day. So, yes. Yeah, we do linkage agreements uh, with partners um, for domestic violence. We just did one actually um, one day last week with Janice Holmes. And one of our case managers actually, she drove her, she got clothes for her and everything and took her over to the Janice Holmes to uh, immediately they had a bed for her and her two kids. So we do linkage agreements um, all the time um, to just to keep that resource uh, up because we know that is needed. Uh, to answer the next question, we are connected with a couple of unions. Um, the problem is, is that when the individual does graduate, they're going to have to be in one of those pre-apprenticeship programs. And so we're connected with a number of organizations who have those apprenticeship programs, St. Paul uh, Ministries, uh, Revolution Workshop, and then, as I said before, Hire 360 as well. But an individual can, in some of these schools, they can take uh, these pre-apprenticeship programs, but they have to score in that 90, that 9 percentile, that 9, 8, or 7. Anything below a 7, they're probably going to have to take the test again. I have a young man that I'm working with right now um, who just graduated from Michelle Clark, and he, not to tell his grade, but it was in like the 6th, almost 700. And so he wasn't selected um, by those unions. So once a person finishes that pre-apprenticeship program, then they go forth and businesses have to pick and choose who they want based off the score or just on personality of who they like. And so when we're um, working with those local unions, they have the right to, to select or not select. The key is, is that we get them in the right program, like a St. Paul Ministries, where they're teaching them not only about how to pass the test, but teaching them about the adversity and, and, and working in the unions because um, it is not the same for black and brown people that it is for uh, white individuals who work in the union and being able to adjust to that and being able to work and thrive in those types of work environments. We're teaching that and we're connecting them with the right program so that they get the right access that they need so that they can not only further their education, but they can boss up when they're in these positions and hopefully start their own businesses. Um, do you have any affiliation with the local? Okay. I think that's the same thing. Yeah. So I hope I answered that. Um, we we are connected 130, 107, if I'm not mistaken, but we're connected with the with the programs um that are a part of that union because there's no, there's no there's no uh, shortcut. We got to do it the right way or we're not going to be selected. And that's the main thing that we're teaching the individuals that you got to come up, you got to come and do it the right way. Uh, 23rd, possibly. Um, Ms. Pitchford, how you doing? I think I know you, if I'm not mistaken. But I definitely would uh, like to connect with you. If you go to the last slide, it's going to have all of our contact information. And so I would uh, in, encourage you to reach out to both of us. Um, it has our- Hi, Marilyn. How are you? I know. I know that name. Yeah. Uh, she was at the <laughs> Institute of, um, for Chicago, Nonviolence of Chicago. Yes. Yeah, we was working close together. We nervous. I'm nervous. You know, we up here doing this and can't see you and you can see us. So, it's funny, yes. Right? <laughs> but- that's our presentation. Um, if you need any more information, or if there's anything that um, we didn't answer, there's our uh, contact information. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to connect and partner. Um, we would love to get this thing uh, going. We're growing every single day. And so I thank Tanya and I thank uh, the Austin, coming, the Austin coming together for allowing us to use that platform to share what we do at WHA. And we look forward to connecting with you all in the immediate future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph and Tanya. Greatly appreciate it. Great presentation. Um, thanks for the audience and everybody that joined us today. I hope you, you guys had a lot to take away from. Um, yeah, Sanovia is going to say a little, give us a little something too. Yeah. Um, thank like you, guys. Thank you, Hub. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> no problem.
problem, no problem. Like we mentioned earlier, uh, the hub is here to connect you to resources. Even if WHA isn't the right fit for you, as the community resource coordinator, I work directly with participants of the hub. So I'll be following up with you if you register, if you requested additional services from the hub. And um, we could see if there's anything that might work better with uh, uh, different participants' backgrounds. Yeah, thank you. And you can also go ahead and register for our next Hub 101 right now, which will be on the 15th, October 15th, with X Planning and Investment Team, the PNI team. We will be hosting them again October 15th. You can also share the registration form or Facebook event with your friends, anyone you might think may be interested. And I uh, hope to see you again. Until next time, again, once again, thank you, WHA, Joseph, and Tanya.